During the midday hours, the heat beats down mercilessly on the plains. The air is burning hot. A scorched atmosphere robs the ground of humidity, dehydrating everything, soil, plants and animals. It is a time of immobility, of extreme stillness. The entire plain appears to crystallize. While the animals near the pools spend hours submerged and immobile, on the plains of the interior, the scarce shadows become much sought after shelters. The dry season advances, and for the weakest, the heat proves too much. For many, like this cow, the rainy season will never come. This time of death is a period of abundance for the scavengers and opportunists of the plain. Animals which are sick or have some physical deficiency die during these days of suffocating heat. The dead capybaras attract the turkey vultures and black vultures, the scavenger birds of the plains who fight the spectacled caimans for their bodies. The caimans' normal diet is fish, so they take advantage of any occasion to eat a capybara or at least the skin left behind by the voracious scavengers. In a world of such open landscapes, an animal has hardly died before an entire horde of black undertakers arrives. They are not exactly the most appealing of animals, but they play a vital role in sustaining the ecosystem. The relentless heat of the many dead bodies could cause epidemics and diseases if these death-loving scavengers did not act swiftly and efficiently. Water levels of the pools continue to fall and the surface of the plains dries out. The smaller lagoons become small marshy pools where fish concentrate, fighting for the last mouthfuls of air and water. And once again, disaster for some becomes a time of abundance for others. For the Caimans, the small pools represent a veritable feast. The piranhas crowd together in muddy waters where the lack of oxygen makes them deathly slow. So to catch them, all you need to do is to dive down into the water and swallow them down one by one. Our tortoise is now traveling across dry ground which until just a few days ago lay beneath the water. It is 50 degrees centigrade and her dark shell rapidly absorbs the heat while the dust from the dried out mud chokes her. This is the plains at their most cruel. At least she is lucky in that she doesn't depend on the water as much as the fish or on body temper as much as the mammals. Otherwise, she too would be dead by now. Exhausted but persevering, the Morokoi reaches the shore of another pool, this one on such low-lying land that it will retain some water right through until the rains come. This time she doesn't hesitate. A group of leafy trees rises above the water at some distance and, thinking this is the forest, she enters the cool water which cools down her burning shell, bringing relief from the heat.
But what the tortoise does not know is that what she thinks is the forest is in fact a group of trees in the water, a place chosen by the American ibises to establish their breeding colony. These jabiru storks, or wood ibises, always live close to the water. For them, this is the time to make the nests and bring their young into the world. The pools shrink and the fish are concentrated, so there is plenty of food and it is easy to catch. The ideal time to ensure the chicks get enough to eat. In years when food is abundant, the storks can raise up to five chicks, though three is the normal number. Feeding these voracious young is a never-ending job, which both parents share. But survival is not just a question of food. Living directly above a pool presents certain dangers. The chicks know no other world but the leaves and branches and must stay here, close by the nest, until they develop feathers, their wings gain strength, and they are able to fly away. Until then, their lives will depend on prudence. Beneath the breeding colony lies death. The apparently peaceful waters hide sharp teeth beneath the green blanket of the water hyacinths. They are a silent, invisible army with powerful weapons patiently waiting to gain revenge on the beings that pursue and devour them on the surface. They are the piranhas. The very name inspires respect among the local people. Piranhas, fish armed with powerful jaws and razor-sharp teeth, shadows among the maze of roots, impatient to receive prey coming from above. If it loses its balance for just a second, the chick will fall to its death. The army swiftly moves into action with incredible ferocity, reducing the victim to bones in just a minute or two. And then, in seconds, calm is restored. The false calm of lurking death. <laughs> <laughs> 